Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here today with Andre Girando, who is the Chief Operating Officer for Merlia Hotels and Resorts. And we're going to talk to Andre a little bit about what's going on with Malia. And I was lucky enough just now, I am in Madrid now, and uh, I believe that Andre is in Mallorca. So this is the, 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 the vagaries of Zoom. Um, I was at his, one of his hotels, a Grand Merlia, here, right here in uh, Madrid. That's absolutely wonderful. And we had lovely dinner there last night. But we're going to talk about the company as a whole, what's going on today, especially as we move, hopefully, and I think we are, out of this pandemic period that we've all been suffering through for more than a year now. Uh, and you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Andre, first of all, how are you? And we said you are in Mallorca, correct? We are in Mallorca. First of all, good morning. Hello. Thank you for uh, hosting us today. Uh, yes, we are in Mallorca. Mallorca is home for Melia Hotels International. The company was founded here over 65 years ago. Now, tell us a little bit about, again, Melia Hotels International, especially the, the way it is today as we emerge from the pandemic. Absolutely. Well, as, as I was saying, you know, the company was founded 65 years ago. Our chairman and still active founder uh, is pretty much involved. Uh, the company is a family-run public company. We've been in the stock market since 1996. So we think we have the best of both worlds. You know, we, we do have the DNA of a company, which cultures and values have been around the world for a number of years, very committed to the communities where we started. Uh, at the same time, we have the discipline and the governance to move through these uh, complex times. Um, one of the things that it's important for us, I would guess, it's the, uh, the way the portfolio of the company is structured. Mm -hmm. So it's been a tough year and a half. I think this is the, uh, the crisis of the uh, tourism. It's the crisis of the uh, mobility. So it's been tough, I guess, in the sector worldwide, probably less so in the U.S., but I would guess in the rest of the world, it's been oh, a in the U.S., it's years. actually been pretty bad too. The travel, especially, has been hit hard, and most definitely two segments that we care about: hotels and travel advisors. So uh, we've had a tough year. Travel advisors have survived. The hotels have gotten through, but uh, I think we've had just as tough a year as everybody in the world, and it's it's amazing. But you, but what the good thing is, as you're telling us now, you know, is we're 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 coming back, right? Well, absolutely we are. And I think what I meant from the U.S. is that it's probably a market that started off three or four months ahead the rest of the other markets. That's and that's, we've, been, we've been lucky with that. Uh, you know, we are distributed uh, all around the world. We're in 44 countries. Today, we're the, one of the 20 largest uh, hotel companies uh, worldwide. And so we have a strong footprint in the Caribbean. We also have a strong footprint in Spain, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, so do we in the rest of Europe, Southeast Asia, and China. Uh, so the situation, given, I would say, the resilience of the company is that, you know, through the crisis, we've been well distributed. But now there's been a global crisis. So obviously, it's been, it's been a challenge for everyone. Mm -hmm. One thing that has been key is that about 60% of our portfolio are resorts. So right. we're 60% resorts, 40% urban. But in that 40% urban, I would say about half of it are what we call pleasure destinations, right? So you have Madrid, Barcelona, London, Milan, Rome, which we believe will be coming uh, sooner back to, back to business. Right. Every, all um, the Americans are heading to Europe, at least certainly for 2022. And maybe I've seen a few here, so that's for sure. That, that, that's what it seems. You know that uh, having said that, we were lucky enough in the Caribbean Caribbean was probably the key destination for the U.S. market for the past few months. So Mexico has emerged a lot earlier from this situation. So has the Dominican Republic, Mexico right. uh, more so. And then in Europe, I think that through this pandemic, something that it's pretty obvious is that it's all, I would say, local business. So Europe, Europeans travel to Europe, Americans travel to either south of the U.S. or the Caribbean, Asia for Asia. So We've been really trying to work hard in creating uh, enough experiences for the market. Um, so Spain has, uh, since May, shown good progress. I think right. it's difficult to measure against 2020 for obvious reasons. So we try to measure everything against 2019. And I would say overall for 2021, we're going to be around 30% behind 2019 okay. for the Spanish and Caribbean resorts. 
So it's not a bad news. I think it's, this is important as, as things start to come back. Well, let's talk a little bit about your brands. And you have a number of brands and also the markets they target. Uh, and also, what brands are you really going to focus on as we emerge from the pandemic? One thing that has been clear for us, listen, the, uh, the brand architecture of the company, um, we have what we call the premium or upper upper scale portfolio. And there's three set of brands. So we have the Grand Milia Hotels and Resorts, which right. you visited. It's uh, more or less la grand dame of every destination we're at. Uh, we're in. Then we have Paradisos Resorts, which are high-end, all-inclusive resorts, mainly in the Caribbean, soon to come to Spain and Southeast Asia. And then we have uh, Mi Hotels and Resorts, which are luxury lifestyle hotels. Uh, so that's the premium portfolio. And then we have, obviously, Melia, which is, I would say, the driver of the company, and Inside, which is more of an affordable lifestyle brand, mm. uh, up-and-coming, trendy, both in, in, in resorts and urban destinations. And then we have Sol Hotels, which is where everything started 65 years. Really? Uh, 65 okay. years ago, yeah. Sol Hotels was the beginning of the company, and uh, we started in Mallorca, so we're first in the Balearic, then the Canary Islands, then we moved to the mainland, and our first international property was Bali in 1985. Not a bad so way to start, huh? <laughs> no, absolutely not. And it's been, it's, been a, it's been a great journey so far for the company. Uh, so what we've seen is a couple of things. Several years ago, we clearly understood the importance of having the relationship with the customer and being able to connect with the customer. Our strategy was all about understanding the customer, talking to the customer, and developing the strategy for the customer. So, so far today, what we see is that the first brands that are coming back to business are the premium brands. Right. It's interesting to see that our premium portfolio is only 6% behind 2019. So the booking pace for this period has been for all those brands that have you know, superior categories, larger open spaces, wellness activities, Mm -hmm. uh, that people seem to be willing to reconnect with, with themselves. And obviously through this, we have a Stay Safe with Melia program, which is related to safety, first of all. Uh, so we've been able to connect with our customers. So we've been working on developing our premium portfolio. I would say the growth and refurbishment pace in the past five to eight years has been over 65% in our premium portfolio. Uh, this is where we're focusing. At the same time, we're growing the footprint of Melian Insight. So I would say overall, um, most of the brands are, all of the brands are being targeted for growth in different directions. So. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very familiar with uh, the Paradisus resorts in, in Mexico and Caribbean, and also have gotten to know the Grand Melia and starting to know the Me properties, but you're your other perhaps, and, and I'm so old, I remember Sol Melia. So, uh, you know, that, that's when I, when I first knew the company. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah, not that, well, it, it's 30, 30 some years for me. And I, I remember going down to Mexico and other places and, and saying, well, what is Melia? Boy, this seems to be a pretty big company. And uh, so now we found out about it. But it's interesting that you say, you, as we recover, that uh, you are going to, you really are looking at your premium brands. And let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, are you considering, actually, are you considering the development of any new brands to meet demands of the sort of the new markets as we? Uh, uh, yeah, I think that what we can say regarding this is that uh, on one hand is that, you know, we are on one hand partners, leading hotels. We have over six properties, member of leading hotels of the world. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, virtuoso, fine hotels and resorts, and we're evolving in the upper, upper scale market. Uh, that has allowed us to grow our international footprint. We're very well positioned in Spain, in the Mediterranean, but obviously we want to continue to grow our, our footprint. And uh, uh, China has been very important, especially mm -hmm. because we really want to go through the outbound market. And, and what we're trying to achieve is, is brand recognition everywhere. Um, Yes, we, we, we are, um, there's two things that we're doing because of the situation. Let me try to explain this correctly. Okay. Uh, there is a lot of dependence on the traditional way of doing business in the Mediterranean, mainly traditional wholesalers and others. It is a reality that the past couple of years have been very, very challenging. And what we've been doing is we've been concentrating in our distribution strategy and our distribution system. So we have launched prior to the pandemic, we had launched Two things. One is affiliated by Melia, okay. which is really a, uh, a distribution 
monetizing program, if, if you like, where we see that there is a lot of demand for different individual and small companies that are having challenges growing and getting the distribution in place. So that has been important for us. We've, we've grown over 3,000 rooms in the past six months through mm -hmm. Affiliated by Milia. And we see a great opportunity because when you get to understand that in Europe, in the Mediterranean and Spain, less than 20% of the portfolio is branded, sure. you get an idea of the huge opportunity there is. So there are a number of elements, you know, second generations, which are probably not that interested in, in the hotels, the challenges of distribution. So we've been supporting this, this, this profile of, of hotels uh, in order to bring our brands and to really start developing affiliated by Melia. Um, second is that we've launched uh, Melia Collection. Melia Collection is mm -hmm. a soft brand of upper, upper scale hotels. Uh, one niche behind our Grand Melia, but there's a lot of character, uh, high character properties around Europe, which uh, very defined architecture, which with very defined service culture, they're all different. And I think we can bring value to this property. So we've launched Melia Collection uh, mm -hmm. last year, and that has been evolving. So more than growing new brands, we're meeting some of the market needs by adapting either Melia Collection or uh, affiliated by Melia. But obviously strengthening our brand portfolio. We now have about 33 properties for, for um, uh, premium, uh, uh, premium brands. And again, most of our pipeline is on, on these premium properties. So you have me Barcelona, you have me Malta, uh, me Bangkok. Uh, those properties are come me Doha, which are opening between 21 and 22. Uh, in Milan, we have the Gran Melia Corducio. We have the Gran Melia Shen Show and the, Melia, the Gran Melia Cameron in China and Vietnam. Um, we have Paradisus Playa Mujeres as well coming probably within the next uh, 90 days prior to the winter season. Yeah, I season. heard of that one down when I was in Mexico, yeah. <laughs> it's a great property. So there's a lot of activity. You know, crisis also means opportunity. And if there's anything we want to do is make sure we come out stronger of this situation. Well, you did talk about a number of the properties that are coming up, and it does seem you are concentrating on me and Grand Milia, and they seem to be popping up all over the world, which is wonderful that you're going to have those those things as we emerge. And as we know, it's been interesting to open up properties during this period, uh, to say the least, right? It's, it's you know, we, we, it's, been, it's been a challenge. You know, most of these properties were already underway, and there's a moment that obviously you need to go on. And, you know, the sooner you are in the market, uh, the sooner you'll be ready for the ramp up and, and to recover. So, the company has not stopped uh, investing in the CapEx uh, program, in updating our hotels. I think that in the past uh, five years, the company has invested over 600 million euros in repositioning and upgrading our properties. Obviously, with 65 years in business, you need to rotate and, and update your portfolio. But I would say that today, 90% uh, of the portfolio is up to date. And there's a very interesting brand called Inside, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I know. I, I just time, heard of that. that. That was one I wasn't familiar with. We were talking about it last night. Uh, what, what, tell us exactly what that is and where, where that falls in, into your system. Well, it's really, it's more, you know, we try to divide our, our, our brands more into the psychographic, if, if, if you like. Uh, so this is a upper scale, um, affordable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Uh, very uh, in tune with the local market. Mm -hmm. And um, we've started with this company, with this brand, in about 12 years ago, 15 years ago in, in Germany. And we have since developed and we, take, we took it into our resorts as well. Mm -hmm. So when you see a certain profile of customer, I wouldn't say millennials, but a certain profile of customer, because again, psychographic, we don't think it's related specifically to that. Uh, but we saw an important niche of people that wanted to go on holidays, that wanted to resemble something they would usually use when they're in an urban uh, destination. So we mm -hmm. extended the brand to, to some of our resorts. And to give you an idea, just this year, we've opened up Newcastle, we just opened up Liverpool, we oh, just wow. opened up uh, Amsterdam, and we opened Luxembourg. Uh, so, so for primary and secondary destinations that have the energy of the city, 
this brand works very, very well. No, that's great that you have that brand and, and uh, all, all your other wonderful premium brands as well. Now, uh, I was going to ask you about what your digital strategy is for Amelia Hotels going forward and how you will adapt this as we emerge from the pandemic. Right. Um, as we were mentioning at the beginning, at some part of the conversation, you know, we, we hold very, very strong partnerships with the, the travel industry in general, with, with the wholesalers, mainly with the travel agents all over the world. Um, but one thing that was important for us was really to strengthening our own .com uh, unit. Right. So Melia.com now generates in uh, those key feeder markets that we're mentioning over 53% of our revenues. Okay. So within this period, it's been very relevant because of the lack of other more traditional players coming, coming into place. Uh, we started with this strategy probably eight to 10 years ago. We, we feel that it's been quite successful. With it comes over 14 million members of our Melia Rewards program, mm -hmm. which generate over 80% of the reservations that come through Melia.com. So this is very important for us. It is today, and it's very important for growth and development worldwide. So we've been strengthening that strategy. Uh, so what we've done is we've extended the strategy in the rest of the company. So we haven't stopped any of the strategic plan investments we had uh, lined up to be a company that is, uh, there's two things that we're very concerned. One has to do with all the systems and processes in place that can be digitalized that allowed us to be more efficient and concentrated far more in the customer. And the next phase today, we're, we're, we're very much invested in the digital state. Mm -hmm. So within the customer journey, we're doing, we think, a very good job in the pre and the post, and we're now focusing on the digital state. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're moving forward with this, and we're very excited. You know, not only the app and everything that evolves through the journey of the customer as it comes in, as it leaves the hotel, uh, because we're also very focused in all the food and beverage strategy and in all the wellness strategy. So we think that all of this is very relevant as we go through our, our digital transformation and we continue to do so. Well, it, it certainly in this day and age, if you don't have an app or you're not scanning a barcode uh, or something like that, I mean, last night I ate at your marvelous restaurant at the Gran Milia here, in Madrid, and uh, uh, he actually did bring some uh, uh, laminated paper me paper menus, but we also had the the barcodes that we had to scan, uh, which seems to be you know if you don't have a if you don't have a cell phone that takes a photo, you can't eat anymore, right? Well, listen, and probably soon you won't be able to travel as comfortable because of the uh, green passport and so right. many other right. things. So I think COVID has really put some. Uh, uh, speed on the digital process in most right. of the companies, not only in the sector, but uh, so we, you know, we were already following that path and we continue to do so. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now, I guess it's, about, it's all about making, yeah, sorry. No, I just wanted to say that it's all about making also the life of the customer easier, okay. uh, but being very respectful. So the balance between re being very close to the customer, but at the same time, keeping the distance, I think it's very important. And that's what we're learning along the way. Well, I know tr traditionally you have worked very strongly with uh, wholesalers and tour operators and also, of course, travel uh, agencies and travel advisors. Uh, can they be part of this digitalization strategy? Is there a way to book a, a Melia uh, a hotel as a travel advisor through uh, digital, through uh, online? Absolutely. And, and, and I thank you for bringing, bringing it up. It's very important for us. So, the same way we've developed the B2C strategy, we've developed the B2B strategy, and we have a very strong program called Melia Pro right. and Melia Pro Premium. So as you go into Melia.com, you go into Melia Pro, and, and you learn the whole process through the relationship we have with the travel agent. Just to give you an idea, in, in, uh, during the pandemic, we spent several hundreds of hours connecting with our partners in what we call Melia Labs. Right. So we had live feeds from our hotels with our general managers, our team, explaining the resorts, what were the news of the resorts. So technology does allow you to get closer when the situation like this arises. So uh, I would encourage through Melia Pro and Melia Pro Premium, where we have a dedicated ambassador that establishes a relationship in every premium property uh, to, to, to come forward and, and get to know us. No, absolutely. And it is, it's, it's, it's a great way. And I know, again, uh, even, you know, for us, we've, we've expanded digitally, uh, obviously what we're doing right now. I mean, uh, we weren't doing a year and a half ago. 
Uh, we were not doing a lot of Zoom interviews, but then necessity, uh, and we're still doing them. We're not going to stop. We lo- we Believe me, we love doing lo- lo- the interviews live on the properties, and that's a great way to experience them, but we're going to have to keep this as well. Now, let's talk a little bit about a topic that as we emerge from the pandemic, uh, it seems to be ever more important, and that's uh, sustainability. Uh, uh, what are you doing to make all your properties more sustainable, make the company more sustainable? I think that one thing that it's very, very important for us, you know, this company has grown in the communities we we serve and we're related to. You know, we've been opening destinations, if you want, for a number of years now, whether it's Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Mexico, Bali, and many others. So I think we've always uh, had an eye in in establishing relationships with the community, you know, whether it's education, whether it's employment, whether it's really supporting the community because the community supports our company. It's always been like this. And and, and for us, it's been really an honor uh, for the past few years, for instance, we've been acknowledged as the most sustainable hotel company in Spain and the third in the world, mm. uh, according to the Standard & Poor's, you know, the SPGI, the, the Global Corporate Sustainability Index. And, and there's a lot of processes going through non-financial uh, uh, data that is related to how we establish that process. Uh, we are the only Spanish travel company included in, in the Europe's Climate Leaders uh, 2021 by Financial Times. And we've been named the seven most sustainable managed company in the world by the Wall Street Journal. So there's certain things that we're doing, and it's not uh, what they call greenwashing or, or pure marketing tools. You know, this is a reality for us. It's part of the DNA of the company. Uh, we have, uh, in, 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 on the other hand, we've... Uh, We've involved our customers. So through our Mini Rewards program, we're asking our customers to participate in this Save the Planet strategy mm-hmm. and having them be a part of it. Because we think it's I think the number one responsibility a hotel company like us has is the ability to speak to our customers about this and really try to pass the message across. We have different systems in place, which we call Cooperate, which are really related to diminish the uh, carbon footprint in our properties. And everything we do as we grow and as we develop, uh, we're trying to work on, on, on these construction processes that are related to, to sustainable acts. Um, we work a lot with local producers. So we really want to concentrate in what we call Kilometro Cero in Spain. Uh, so as close as we can to, to, to provide for the local community. So there's a number of things we're doing. And uh, if you look at our milia.com and you will see this non-financial report, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with what the company is honestly doing through this process. Right? Well, it is interesting because I know some of your competitors uh, also have programs, similar programs, and it's actually nice for everyone to be competing to be more sustainable, right? There's, I think there's, uh, there, there are a number of elements to that. And obviously today, our, our stakeholders, whether it's investors, whether it's our customers, whether it's the people that want to come and work for us. One of the key questions they want to understand is how committed are we? Uh, so I think this is, you know, this is a reality and, and we're more than happy to be a strong part of it. Well, that's great. And, uh, and, and that's one thing I've taken from this. And I, I first thought we're going to be so busy recovering from the pandemic that sustainability is going to get lost in the shuffle. But what's actually seems to have been happening is that it's become ever more important as, as we get back and people have refocused on it, especially as we seem to be emerging from the pandemic. And that goes, that goes to my last question, which is, when, when do you think, uh, you know, obviously we're worried about um, outbreaks and uh, of the variant D and, and everything like that, although most people who are vaccinated seem to be heading out and traveling and trying to get back to normal. But when do you think... Uh, your company and, and the industry is going to start to see normality, if you will, whatever that passes for. Uh, is it going to be 2022, 23? Uh, uh, what, what is your prediction? Listen, um, visibility is limited, as we've seen in, in the past few weeks. You know, uh, It's like an every last minute surprise for a number of reasons. So I think it's difficult to, to see. We, we do believe that Certain markets, certain destinations will emerge sooner than others. Um, we obviously see that the resort business in general, uh, should we should start 2022 with a positive note in the Caribbean. And we would hope that if everything goes well, 
it's very difficult to, to predict, but hopefully everything goes well and we would see a positive summer as well for 2022. I think that uh, we've seen some uh, important demand for MICE business. MICE and incentive business is very relevant for the Caribbean right. and for us in general. And I think that you know companies are preparing themselves maybe more for the end of 22, beginning of 2023, but they're preparing to come back. So I think MICE and incentive business 2023 will be probably the year that things will start coming back. And I think that what, when it relates to the corporate environment, I think we're going to see some hybrid solutions between you know, home office, Zoom technology. Right. Uh, so I think we need to learn how to establish a mixed relationship, a hybrid relationship moving into the future. But all, all in all, we would expect that the second part of 2023 and most likely 2024 should bring us to levels of 2019, all considering. We'll, we'll see, but that's the vision that we have. Well, that's great. That's encouraging news. And uh, uh, like you, uh, I'm probably we're all probably going to these hybrid uh, digital slash live conferences. I'm heading to one next week uh, that has both elements. Um, and then probably they'll be that way for the future, at least. But one thing that is certain is that we're all very happy to get to in back to in person conferences. That's for sure. It's been a relief to be starting to do that. I started doing that in March. I'll be doing that uh, next week in Vegas. Uh, and then it looks like I have a pretty strong schedule for the remainder of the year for the trade events. I can imagine. It is, it is kind of, uh, it's, it's, let's just say, uh, they, they say st watch, watch for social distancing, but it's very hard for a lot of hugging and, and trying to figure out whether you should shake someone's hand or whirl around in some kind of weird fashion and then do a fist, <laughs> fist bump. So it is, it is yeah. the new challenge. But, and look, I guess my final question here is, uh, what else do you want to tell our travel? We've got about 90,000 travel advisors out there, uh, and they want to know about Mealy Hotels in order to sell them better. And what, what would you tell them? No, I think first of all is that uh, please give us the opportunity through Melia Pro, Melia Pro Premium to get to understand our company better. We have great partners. Uh, that can also uh, share what we've been doing in, in overall. Um, I think we're very excited with the way we are up, uh, dating and upgrading our product portfolio in general. Uh, we're looking forward to welcome everyone in Europe, the main capitals of Europe, which is something that we expect will come up soon. And, and obviously to continue looking into our properties in, in the Caribbean in, in general. Mm -hmm. And I think that for the U.S. market, uh, really to take a closer look into the south of Spain, the Canary Islands and the Balearic Islands, because I think this, they have great value proposition. And we've been trying to be, and we are ambassadors of Spain to the world. And we try to bring the Spanish luxury in our properties. And there's so much happening, whether it's gastronomy, art, design, so in every sense of the word. So allow us to please introduce you to, for those who haven't had the opportunity, to some of the Spanish flair, the Latin flair the company has to offer, uh, which is very important. And, and, it, and, and before, we, before we go, I think that, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't because of the dedication and the passion of our staff. Mm -hmm. I think that we really need to recognize the past uh, 18 months, how tough they have been on everyone. Mm -hmm. I think emotionally and professionally for for every reason you can imagine, whether it's furlough, hotel closings, hotel openings, uh, family situations. Uh, and I think that if there's anything in this company that's been really, really a, a um, I would say, something that everyone recognizes us is for the service that we provide. Mm -hmm. And we cannot have happy customers if we don't have happy employees. And it's been a challenge to the time. So I really would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone that has been involved every stakeholder, our partners in the industry, but also the teams that had allowed us to continue to serve our customers through these difficult times. No, and it has been a tough year, but uh, everyone has gotten through it uh, because of that, I'm sure. Now, just one last question about where can our travel advisors go to learn more about Melia? I assume uh, Melia.com is a pretty good place to start. but uh, Melia.com is a place, then go to Melia Pro. Melia Pro will guide you to some of the... Uh, how we establish some of the relationship we have, and then through Melia.com, you can get to understand all of our all of our brands, our products, and what's happening in the pipeline. 
Well, Andre, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, it's still on Zoom. We could have done this, I suppose, if you had made your way over to Madrid to, to your marvelous property here. Uh, it was a fun dinner last night, and we had a good time and, and seeing the property. Uh, but uh, these, these times that they are, we're, we're doing Zoom. And it, and it sounds like I should come over to Mallorca anyway, so it looks like you, you, you have a good place there. Listen, we, this, it, it was an excuse to meet again sometime soon somewhere. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can do that. And listen, through, uh, through you and your partners, we, we love the feedback. So we would also like to request from your 90,000 uh, travel partners that if there's some feedback for a company that we'd love to hear. So please let us know how we can improve as well. Very good. Again, Andre, thank you very much. And uh, here from Madrid and from Mallorca, I'm James Schellinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.